Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Teague Moore knows what's going on. And if you're uh, at a loss right now and you're a parent who's just trying to get a kid in any level, NAIA, JUCO, NCAA Division One, Two, or Three, Teague Moore, the wrestling consultant, he's the go-to right now, former head coach at American and Clarion University. He's coached at Harvard, Oklahoma State. The guy's been around the block. He knows what's going on. He's a man, right? Biggest uh, biggest investment, biggest decision in your, in your, your child's life, so – you know, get some answers, get them before it's too late. Right. Oh my goodness gracious. We have Matt Hill, the head coach for the Edinburgh fighting Scots on the barbarian hour tonight. Uh, go check out barbarian apparel at barbarian apparel.com coach Hill, the head coach for the Scots. Is this year number three? Going in my fourth. Zab. Is this four? Oh my goodness. Wow. I feel yeah. so old. I feel so it's been old a while because since I've slept on your couch when I was over at Kent State. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dropped my laptop one night. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I was. It's I was, okay. I was researching. It's was okay. Recruiting. Yeah, you're researching. You're watching some old school flow wrestling videos, and uh, yep. you know the. I gotta just tell you something. Didn't break my laptop, but you were like, "I'll, I'll replace your laptop, man." I'm really sorry. You felt super bad about it. It was a total accident. That fire yeah, puts you to sleep sometimes, right? Yep, so, always uh, have the hottest fires. I got a fire going tonight, by the way. I think I think every time I looked on one like one of your social media sites, you're like burning something. So oh, I had a big bonfire out back. I got rid of a bunch of the stuff that was just laying on the, the floor of the woods. Just like trees that fell over, branches, just all types of stuff. The floor. So yes, you're right. There's a lot of fire. <laughs> yes. In and outdoor, lots of fires. That's a that's a fact. Yeah. I love it. I love fire. So, okay. hey, Matt, quick, quickly on your background, right? Because the show's about the Edinburgh Fighting Scots and Matt Hill. Yeah. You've been there. This is year number four as the head coach. You were at Kent State before that. You had two stints at Kent State, correct? I guess you can call you it. You took two. like a year off, didn't you? Yeah. Like, you moved back to PA. Less than a year, like not in 10 months. Yeah. So, so you took a year I, off, uh, 10 months off, I, and then you came back. Yeah. It was where your heart was, right? Of course. I, I wanted to be a college wrestling coach in the worst way. So, and then I had to, I still lived in Pennsylvania. I, uh, had a one, one way commute of 70 miles. I did that for eight years. So uh, I had a lot of commitment there. So I had a two hour rule. I had to, I had to leave two hours before every workout started or every scheduled meeting when, whenever I had to be at Kent state. So it was a, it was a, a fun experience, but I uh, got a lot of, you know, a lot of time on the road and a lot of was able to reflect a lot on going back and forth and make recruiting calls. And it was a great experience. What is the drive now? Uh, it's three minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Shut so. your face. Yeah. It's you a lot a two hour drive almost. Yeah. Hour 45 minute drive to, to, you to almost need that minutes. little, you almost need like a 15, 20 minute commute to rewind, you know, unwind on the way home. But I, 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 I like it. Cause I could, I got a morning workout and then I can come home, you know, have lunch, take my dog out, cut the grass if I have to, and then get back, get back to work. Uh, and then go back in the evening and you only spend, you know, 12 minutes on the road. So it's nice. You realize you just said, cut the grass if I have to. <laughs> you said that you heard that, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, editing. I... That doesn't get edited. That stays in there. That is how much of abundance of time you have now. <laughs> <laughs> What do you say to the commute? Think about that. Hold on. Add all that up. Add all those hours up, those four hours. It's four hours in the car every day, basically, right? Sometimes. Yeah, you can get back. Add that up. Add that up. Add that up over eight years. Then, that, that, well, I think, yeah, I said I spent 20% of my life in the car. So, it was like, well, not that much. It was like 17% of the time on the car um, on a daily basis. That's insane. But when I was not sleeping, I guess. That is, Wow. Yeah, oh so. my god that, I, I remember that yeah you, cr you crashed with me a lot a couple of years oh yeah oh, a couple yeah. different years yeah it and then once the kids came there was no more of that every once in a while but yeah. it was it was super rare but yeah yeah i get that I, I get that man you know what i mean that's just such a huge time commitment and then i remember when flynn left and that started like kind of the dominoes started to fall for you right 
yeah, I, I um, this made a lot of sense to me, and I was really grateful for the opportunity, and them considering me be a the next ho- head coach here, and put my name in a hat, and went through the process, and I guess I did, you know, I I paid my dues, and I had a good uh good enough resume, and people respect me enough around here to give me the opportunity, and rolling with the punches now. It's been fun, so a lot of a lot of uphill battles though. So we're working hard. You know, it's what, what's crazy about it to me is I talked to Hanji last night. He's alum. He's Riders, an All-American at Ryder. You're alum. You know, you wrestled there. Were you a three-time yeah. NCAA qualifier for Coach Flynn? Yes, yes. Three-time qualifier for Coach Flynn. Uh, you know, your alma mater is Edinburgh. Uh, Jimmy's alma mater is Kent State with Coach Andersey. Uh, and we just kind of went through, you know, there's Tom Brands, uh, Escobedo, uh, I believe Stotsman. But not many people get to coach at their alma mater. There's not – I don't feel like you're looking up at the next job. It's kind of like this is where it is. And that's what Hange really said to me. You know, there's been opportunities that have opened up. And, he, you know, he stayed behind Gary Taylor for 17 years. And, and he never left. And it was because that was it for him. Is, are you in a similar situation like that? Like this is my alma mater. This is where I became a man. You know, I, I went into high – you know, from high school, became a man. Love this place. Is it kind of like that for you, Matt? I feel like that. Um, yeah, I honestly, I think it's uh, a great fit for me. I, I'd love to finish my career at Edinburgh um, as a coach, uh, but I, I, I feel like I'm in the same boat as you know those guys that have that feeling about hey, this is it, this is it for me. Um, obviously, I'm going to continue to progress and look for the you know look to get better every day. And um, but Edinburgh is a place for me, so I don't have any other any other thought process really. And I don't know. I'm a pretty simple guy. So it's Edinburgh is a, a pretty simple place. And you know, I, I, I love the community. It's a great place for my family and i um, looking to spend a lot of time here. You already know that I'm, I've been telling people. I, I, I want the NLI's name, uh, national or the uh, not, not, not name image likeness. I want the national letter of intent. I need two of them typed up for Thomas and Ferdinand because they're going to Edinburgh. All right, let's so do you already it. know yeah. that I've already told I've already told you this. I was telling people the other day, like, man, Edinburgh is like for what it is, it's a great mm-hmm. freaking deal, man. It's a great, it's an affordable, super affordable education because a lot of this is getting off the rails, Matt Hill. It, it's getting nuts with some of these higher education and, and the for profit uh, models that some institutions have. It's gotten off the rails, and you guys haven't gotten off the rails. Yeah, I mean, the cost of schools raised for every institution around the country, but Edinburgh has kept a really good uh, system of keeping it down. The state schools here at Edinburgh, I mean, at, at Pennsylvania have kept the prices down. But, yeah, you're 100% correct. It, it, the cost of college is super expensive, but our, our school has kept it down. And it's a great quality education you know, with a lot of different degrees to pick from. Do you guys get the fringe benefits too? Do, do Knox – Oh man, tell me the other one's name. I forget the other guy's name. Knox and Ichabod. It's not Ichabod. Don't say things like that to me. What's the other brother? Other guy's name? Lincoln. Lincoln. Lincoln and uh, Knox. Do Lincoln and Knox, if you're still there, do they get the tuition tuition waiver and do they get to go to Edinburgh for free? Yeah, they'll get tuition waiver. Yeah, they get tuition waiver. So nice. you still have your room and board and stuff like that, but they get tuition waiver. The big ones don't do that. The big, uh, all the, these big gigantic ones do not do that. There's yeah, no tuition I, waiver. Yeah. I think every school has kind of a different policy or depending what state system you're in. So yeah, I can see that. That's huge, man. That That's a huge fringe benefit for people who, uh, you know, they're doing their passion and sometimes you trade things, you know, Matt Hill could go do, uh, you could run a landscaping business, which you had, and that was part of kind of what you were doing when you were off that time, that 10 months, right? I, I had my landscaping business since I was 12 years old, all the way up till. Uh, I love it. Talk about that a little bit. But like, like, so like, there's always like this side hustle, right? A lot yeah. of you guys do this crazy side hustle. Camps are a big part of it because camps build relationships. And, you know, I've talked to Jay Rob about camps. I talked to John Smith about camps. Camps are a big part of what you guys do, and having a strong camp system is important. And if there's down years, you know, everybody had a down year last year. We know that, right? Yeah. And, and you're trying to bring it back. And you guys do a J-Rob thing there sometimes, and you have in the past. And camps are a big part of hustling and, and building the program, and there's funding in there. There's bringing recruits on campus. There's a lot to camps. But a lot of you guys do a lot of different things in order to not make ends meet, but 
you know, so your family can have a better life. You can have summer vacations. You guys can do things like that, right? Talk yeah. about running. Talk about running a landscaping business since since being a teenager. Well, I was kind of a one man show, but it was. Uh, I really started off from um, my my neighbor when I was a little twelve years old. You know, my brother cut her grass, and then my my brother uh, kind of handed it down to me, and then and and then I would then the older couple across the road asked me to cut their grass, and then I had two customers. And then I think I turned 16 or 15 when you're allowed to start working in Pennsylvania. And my first job was Panera bread. And I went there and I worked all these hours and I got my check and it was like, I was like, geez, I worked a lot and I got to pay as much. And I just told my mom, Hey mom, do I still have to work at Panera bread? Can I just go get like two more lawn customers? And so I went and knocked on some other people's doors and I uh, got four, I had four customers. And so, and it kind of, that was kind of like, you know, I didn't have to work at Panera Bread anymore. So I had kind of my own freedom, kind of my own boss. And then it kind of like just stayed throughout college. I had these customers that come home on the weekend, drive back to Edinburgh to train and stuff like that. So it was just a, and then when I was at Kent, I had, you know, my little truck, I had a trailer and some, you know, commercial grade mowers and kind of did that on the side hustle and looking back, looking how many you know, customers I had versus being a college coach with my commute. I don't know how I did it, but I did. So it was fun. I had a, it, it made me who I was that I am today and I'm grateful for it. So. I can tell you how you did it. There was no Lincoln and there was no Knox. That's how you did it. That is probably one of the, one of the parts of the equation. hundred <laughs> percent. I guarantee you that's 90% I, I still, of the equation. I, up till my, up till I uh, started at my last, my last lawn customer was May of, uh, May or June of 2018. That's when I started as a um, head coach here. So I had. What kind of maniac are you? Come on, man. What are you doing? <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, you know how much you get paid when you're an assistant coach at yeah. somebody from high schools. <laughs> yeah, you're right, man. It, it, see, that blows my mind. Um, in my career exploration classes, I started going over what our contract was as teachers. And you yeah. would be really surprised to know that most kids think they think teachers make like. I think they think they, they think teachers make like ten or fifteen grand a year. No, I think they they, they think a lot of teachers like maybe sleep at the school. There's just a <laughs> lot of really crazy misconceptions. But the the wildest misconception for me is the Olympic sports. You guys track field gymnastics, uh, um, you know, not obviously football and basketball. Aside from them, everybody else kind of they pay the assistant coaches on par with what they're paying a lot of wrestling people, right? And they got to do creative ways of fundraising, volunteer assistance, all these other things. And you guys get paid a surprisingly, as far as the assistant coaches, a surprisingly low amount. How do you survive on that? I think we just gave a little part of it, you know, the side hustle, but how do you survive on that? And think about these guys who've done this for 20 plus years. Hanji was at Ryder for 17. You yeah. saw the light of the tunnel early. Did you? Did you? Did this just pop up sooner than you think it would pop up with the head coaching job at Edinburgh? Um, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. One day, you you you're like you look at back and say, "I never thought I'd be in the position I am now." So, I I wasn't surprised. I mean, when Flynn left, I, I wasn't I was ready to go. I was like anxious, but um, you know, when, when Tim made that decision, it was surprising to a lot of the Edinburgh alum and. I mean, I'm one of them. So you just, you're, you're like, wow, he's leaving. Um, he's been here for a long time and did an amazing job. So it was, a, it was definitely a surprise. So, you know, I was a little bit, you know, in that awe stage, but then, you know, it was my time. I had to jump on an opportunity. Your wife had a teaching job that she really loved, right? Yeah. yeah. That was a big part. You guys laughed. And I yeah. think your wife, you know, that's hard. Matt, that's hard. You know, your wife settled in. She's got a teaching job. You had one son. At the, did you have both sons? Oh, yeah, both boys. So, oh, yeah, I think Knox was, Knox was almost two. And then uh, oh. Lincoln was, what, four? So, yeah, I mean, she she did a great job assimilating to to the uh, the transition. And she, she, ended up getting, she got fortunate enough to get a teaching job up here right away. So it worked out. So That takes a lot of the stress away, I think. When she can of come course. up and have a job right away, and you're you're not like that because that's such a stressor on you. And you know, she left yeah, this we, job she loved too, you know. Yeah, she's really she's a really good um, elementary education teacher. So she was a, a third grade teacher for about ten years down in the where, where 
where we grew up, where we went to high school at or middle school, elementary school, I guess. And then uh, she's really good. And she got up here interviewed and it worked out well for us. So we're, we were uh, super excited that that kind of went pretty smoothly into our transition. You're so, from Freedom, Pennsylvania? Yep. Freedom, right on the Iowa River um, between like uh, Ambridge and Rochester. Alcopa is right down the river, Manaka right there. So I can see the Iowa River from where I grew up. How far are you from Pittsburgh? Uh, tw- about 23 miles down the river. You're, so you're real close. I mean, you're under a half hour drive because Pittsburgh traffic's not as her- not horrible like a lot of big cities. No, well, up 65, about, about 30, 30, 35 minutes. So, so obviously growing up, that's Whip Hill country, right? Yeah, WPIO wrestling. Oh, man. You guys are in some of the most fertile recruiting ground that there is. And, and what Flynn was able to do, a lot of my conversations with Flynn, you know, kind of revolve around the third place team, how he was able to recruit. And they did that third place team with four guys, five guys. If you, Mines was in the round of 12, right? And then, you know, Vic Avery was third. AJ, AJ Habit, Port, and, and Vic had a good good tournament. And then uh, Mines and um, – was there anybody else? I mean, I think there's two two other guys that kind yeah. of won matches too. They might have won matches, but I think that big round of twelve for him, because that's like six points. Get a round of twelve guy, that's like six eight points, right? Helps out a lot. Depending yeah, it really points, does. You know, advancement points and stuff like that. So it's uh, yeah, it's huge, and you know, there's amazing, amazing. You look at the third place finish for a small school like Edinburgh at the NCAA championships is just crazy um, to fathom. So it's so wild, man. What that guy did, it was, it was incredible. And then he leaves, he goes to WVU. We talk about that one a lot, you know, the, the big move for him and the kind of almost a little culture shock. And obviously the resources are very different. The university is very different. There's just a lot of, they're so different and polar opposite, right? There's haves and there's have nots, right? But you guys, what you guys do have, you guys got a strong tradition. You got this blue collar work ethic and it's one of my favorite places still to go cover wrestling. I, that's what I love about it. I love Macomb Fieldhouse. I love your room. Your room's right below it with a low ceiling. It's hot in there. You got this yeah. like quasi weight room, like your weight room next to it, where you can work like probably five, seven guys out, eight guys out at the most. And then your office is attached to it. And then there's locker room back there. <laughs> it's, just, it's all right there. And it's gritty and tough. How much did you, like coming back to that to that kind of almost like dungeon uh just blue collar wrestling factory is is really uh like you you come in for the interview and you, you you one of those things about smelling something brings back memory so quickly and you know you smelt the uh the the, the hallway and then walking near the locker room and you just had flashbacks as an athlete and your time there and it was it was super cool and uh just that just coming back and you know remembering all the the battles and the the sacrifice and the tough tough practices and the and the fun and the success we had as, as I had and I, my, our team had as as student athletes was uh was just a great experience and then coming back and you know getting to lead lead a young man and into that those same things that I got to do is was a pretty cool um you know just real overall just a really cool opportunity and it's just super grateful the wildest thing for me was all the guys that left. Yeah, Corbin Myers, Billy Miller, those guys, they were gone right away. They both went to Virginia Tech. Helped me out. Gear went to Oklahoma State. Keep yeah. helping me out. Keep helping me out. There's one uh, more. Sean Russell, uh, Minnesota. Yeah. And then uh, um, Shomers, he ended up going um, to Oklahoma State with uh, Gear. So I think there was – there was about – there were six really core, like, starters that, you know, or returning starters, all American, or you know, multiple NCAA qualifiers that uh, that left. So, how wild is yeah. it that Gear is back, <laughs> Myers is back, Myers is in the yeah. seventh year, isn't he? Yeah, he's in the seventh year. So, um, he he's doing really well though. I, he's I, a I'm stud. Glad I like Corbin Myers. Good guy. It was. I mean, when, the whole wow. process. It wasn't like. I wasn't like mad or it, I came in and I knew that was a possibility. Those guys were going to leave. And it wasn't like, I was like, you guys are jerks or, you know, you know, 
swearing at him or anything. It was just being, uh, it was just business. And I, I tried to handle as best I could. And ultimately, uh, it, things kind of all happened for a reason. So it is what it is. And, and that it was time to rebuild and get Edinburgh back where it needs to be. And, you know, at no point in any conversations with you, and, you know, you and I text periodically month in, month out, right? Yeah. Just randomly check in with one another or have a call every now and again. Yeah. And I've never heard you say boo about those guys. I've never heard you say a negative thing about any one of those guys. I was mad. I was like, that's why are they leaving? And bros, where they should be. I was mad because I was like, I felt like, yeah, I'm a Matt Hill fan, you know. And I was like, I, but I get it. Like, I get why they left. I'm like, not mad at him now. Like initially, I was like, you know, but I get it. I wasn't like mad at the guys like want to go confront him, mad. But like, guys, you can win here. You don't have to leave. You know, what I mean? that, that that was kind of my attitude towards it. Yeah, I think a lot of their situations, they they kind of. Um you know, Flynn did really good job of getting them at Edinburgh and they, they, uh, love the product and they, um, they came there for that reason. So, and they, and then the opportunity came where they kind of got an opportunity, you know, the, a chance to explore their other options and that's what happened. So, uh, as an alumni, I, I probably been like, you know, it's easy to just say this and that and say, all oh, those guys are leaving jerks and you call them some names or whatever. But as a, you know, head coach and, person that understands their situations had a long conversations with them and tried to understand um their their reasonings and why they were what they were you know what they were doing and why they were doing it uh it is what it is and it was time to move on so I could I had a lot of other things to worry about I had to I had to get this team back on track and I would love obviously I, I have relationships with all of them I still talk to them text them and stuff so it's just it is what it is so the relationship business though that's what hanji was talking yeah. about his favorite thing yeah. about this is like he's like i love the relationships i love love helping people you know kids become better people like you said leading young men is a big part of it you you, you mentioned that already but it's it this is such a such a relationship business you could be hiring one of those guys those guys could come back to edinburgh and be your assistant coach and that to me that's a powerful thing because you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of these guys it all comes back around you know, burning yeah. bridges, it, it's going to catch up with you pretty quick when you're burning bridges. Yeah, those relationships are, you know, important. You know, you, you want to be the you want to be their coach and also their friend and more so their coach firsthand. And then uh, and, and over the years, four, I mean, four or five, six years with, with an athlete, and they go through the grind and the emotions with you. You really get to know a person and um it's tough. Uh, sometimes things don't always work out, work out. You don't see eye to eye, but ultimately uh, you want that to be the athlete's choice. You want them to, you know, feel like you did them right, but also they understand why you made decisions you did versus why they made decisions they did. So, uh, but yeah, I think some of the best things about the relationships with these, these guys that you recruit and then coach is, uh, you know, when they, when they get married, you go to their weddings and get to, you know, see them go to the next chapters of their life. And then you, you follow them while they have kids. And then you, they come back to a reunion or you see them at the NCAA tournament or they're actually coaching as well. So it's a, it's a pretty rewarding um, job where you get to see these guys continue to grow as young men and become fathers and, you know, leaders in their, you know, whatever profession they, they follow. So Last time that I saw you outside of wrestling was at Ian's wedding. So I think that that's appropriate, time? right? <laughs> Remember it was yeah, in that I'll... sweet barn. It was cool. Oh yeah. The barn was nice. That was like a really cool setup. And, and that See, was a cool... lot of, a lot of Oak Harbor, Oak, Oak Harbor people there. So yeah. The Carver. Yeah. Was... Carver crazies. Yeah. Wit. <laughs> Wit. Oh, quitness. <laughs> Two tanks. <laughs> Two, Two tanks. tanks. <laughs> Uh, Jordan Marrero, my former opponent in the uh, Cleveland State Open. <laughs> that was awesome, Zab. Oh, it was so stupid. Bevlion oh. got me good. Bevlion. Oh, was that – why did you wrestle in that again? Was there, was he there like – won a, Vegas. I made a bet. Oh, yeah, he won Vegas, so he had to wrestle. A, and then what's his name? Stahura kept redrawing the bracket because I got stuck against his guy who I would have beat. And he, he wanted me to wrestle his guy. I'm glad I didn't have to wrestle that Kara George dude because that guy could have hurt me pretty bad. Yeah, that guy would have hurt me pretty bad because he's a big. I the actually had kid? him in the in the concies, and he, we both just like double left. We double forfeited, double oh, defaulted. Is that a classic? Uh, the old yeah, classic slide on out. 
Yeah. Listen, yeah. I fulfilled my end of the bargain. The best part about it is I lived with Saspi and Marrero at that point in time. They were tenants and upstairs in my house. <laughs> and both of them got hurt that day. And I left and went to uh, Wrightsville Beach in Wilmington, North Carolina, for the rest of the break. And yeah. I was gone to like January 2nd. I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> and that thing was like December 18th. I was gone. I went on vacation for like two weeks. Right after your 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 comeback. Yeah. From- dude, the Kara George dude and I were in the locker room together, and I was like talking to him. He was the guy that passed away. He was on yeah. the football team. Yeah. And I was just like, this dude is massive. He's walking around in his towel, and I'm like, and he had this massive tattoo on his back, and I'm like. I remember him. Dude, yeah. I'm like, that guy would have hurt me so bad. <laughs> that guy would have thrown a boot in and dislocated my hip. Who was the starter at Ohio State that time? Oh, I can't, dude. I, I can't even well, like. It was before the Snyder era, right? Yeah. It was right before. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was. Uh, Tavanello, maybe. Uh, Tavanello. Yeah, it was. Ta- there was Nick Tavanello. Yeah, Nick Tavanello was the starter, and he was the backup. Yeah. And Tavanello was like round of twelve that one year, but right he before he got here, right? pushed out, he was round of twelve. Wow. Yeah. But you know what? I'm wrong a lot. Last night I told uh, Hanji, I got on a rant. I got on an Indian's rant. You know we're changing the name, right? Yeah, to the 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 like some kind of like Avengers team or something. The Guardians. Or? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Guardians of the Gap. I get where you, you. It's a Marvel thing. You got mixed up. I get it. <laughs> so the Guardians name is already owned by a Cleveland uh, men's roller derby team. Oh, how's that working? Out? They have to buy it off of them. So oh, the sure, owner, not... the owner lives right by Kenston High School. Oh, really? Larry Dolan lives across. He lives three miles away from me. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, I've been driving by with the windows down, yelling, "Sell the team! <laughs> Sell the team!" Anyhow, I misspoke last night, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, one year I made as much money. Like one year I had a good year with Reynolds, and I was doing the." doing yeah. broadcasting every weekend and I, my teaching salary one year I made like over a hundred thousand dollars. And I was like, yeah, I made as much money as Francisco Linder the year we made the world series. And we paid him 560 grand a year. We made the world series, which is pitiful. Yeah. It's which is low, pitiful, which is low for him, I guess. So I, I don't know. He makes 30, they paid him. The Mets paid him $341 million over 10 years. He makes $34 million a year. What we were paying him 500 K. I mean, it, it's that's good pitiful, Matt. That Matt good that's, that's shameful. That was good business by the Indians, uh, the Guardians um, organization. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, hold on. So, Sa- Josh, Josh Sasby, you know, you coach Tommy. You coach Tommy, yeah. right? I know Josh, too. Josh is Barbarian Apparel. This is, this is Josh, yeah. right? Josh got me to a Reds game this summer with Jared Upper. Mm-hmm. And he got me. He got me on the, the Reds. Red, I'm on the Reds train, dude. I'm gonna be a Reds fan. Oh, so you're just giving up on the? I'm done. Cards already? They literally sent me a survey tonight about attending games. The Cleveland Indians sent me a survey tonight. I'm gonna screenshot for you what I wrote to them. I wasn't very nice, Matt Hill. I wasn't. I was not very nice to them about what they can do to improve my and bring me back to the games. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was it was probably not the nicest stuff I could have said to them. But I wanted to be honest and forthright. Sell the team. As you as you always are, Zeb. I'm usually pretty honest. Yeah. So what's up? I heard are you are you neighbors with one of the offers, the Troy? Troy okay, so so Troy and uh George D. Camello, interestingly enough, mm-hmm. live right next both live within a mile of my kids' daycare. Nice. So I drive by George's every day, and then uh, another mile and a half down the road is Troy. So, yeah, I mean, they, they live up here in the Sugar and Falls. Troy says, he, Troy says he has you come over and cut trees down for him or something. Oh, uh, did he tell you about that? Uh, he told me – yeah, he told me you came down, came over and cut some trees. I, don't know. I cut this, like, probably like a 90 or 100-foot tree down, and I told him every possible scenario. I'm like, the only scenario probably that's not going to happen is it's not going to fall on your house. So yeah. it leaned against another tree. <laughs> I had to like almost destroy my four wheeler pulling this thing down. And like my neighbor, Bob helped me and we got this thing down on the ground, but I was like, so stressed out. And it went as bad um, besides it falling and killing somebody or falling on his house. It went about as bad as it could go. (laughs) 
And we bartered, though. We did the old barter. The old, uh, you know, yeah, the you old Tom some, Miller barter system. Some plumbing equipment or something? Plumbing equipment. There you go. You got it. Hot water heater. So, getting the job done. You know, yeah, but yeah, he's, he, was, he was nice about it, though. It sounds like he was nice about it because it wasn't good. Good stuff. But we got it all cut down. And nobody got hurt. All the wood got cut up. And I split all the wood. Yeah, it, 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 we got the job done. You have to answer your question. Right. But um, back to Scott's. Back to fighting. Listen, hey. That's gold there, by the way. When I get to tell you about, uh, you know, Frankie Lindor and us not paying his market value and driving by uh, old man Dolan's neighborhood and screaming with the windows down, sell the team. I need this. Four point six billion dollars. I need to see you like on Twitter or something yelling out your window. I'm gonna just send you the video after this. I sent it oh, to Angie last night. Okay. Angie's like, that's awesome. <laughs> but I misspoke. I didn't make more money. I didn't make as much money as uh Sorry, Zab. It's fine. Frankie okay. Lindor. But you get the point. They paid the guy you know one seventieth or one one hundredth of what he's making now. It's 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 a crime. It's it's a travesty, Matt Hill. But anyhow Hey, how are the Buckos? You're a Bucko fan, aren't you? The Buckos aren't that good, so I have to. You have to sit and wait. I do like I do like Pirate Baseball, though. I do follow them. Um, You've been waiting whatever. thirty years with the Buckos, dude. They were good. The they 90s. were good, like the, the 2012 or something. Or, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, they had a decent. They had like three year, three year good, three good years. Yeah, that was it. Was a long time coming, and they they dropped off pretty hard. So. Yeah, they they, they got the best stadium though. I think the one of the top three. Yeah, it's a very. I nice think it's a great stadium. You walk across the Roberto Clemente Bridge, it's it's the total fan experience in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. For 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 football, obviously for hockey. Um, in uh, 2019 NCAs were at uh, what is it? PNG yeah. PNG Paints. What is the name of the arena? Uh, PGA or yeah. Some PNG paint. Paints, I think. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Pittsburgh yeah, paint. so your NCAs were at the, the Pittsburgh Penguins Arena in, in 2019. You were the head coach at Edinburgh at that point then. That was my first year at NCAAs. That was that my first, first year. Yeah. Oliver qualified? Yeah, we had Oliver qualified. Okay. Oliver's back, though. Yeah, he is, yeah he's back. Oliver, so I had this conversation with Hanji last night. The whole yeah. purpose of this show tonight is to give you, you to give a preview of the, the Fighting Scots. Uh, we'll eventually get to that, but I want to talk about 174. I'm leaning back. All right, there we go. I love it. <laughs> 174 is wide open in the Mac. 197 is wide open in the Mac, right? The team championships is wide open in the Mac because Central was the odds on favorite. Like you couldn't have bet against Central for me two weeks ago. Then Drew Hildebrand's not coming back, right? I heard that. that. Yeah, I just that's heard about cra- that. You know, crazy things happen, right? And if that guy doesn't come back, if that's true, well, now Northern Illinois got some really good guys, right? Yeah. Ryder's got some good guys, but Ryder doesn't have a returning NCAA finalist back. So there, this is this is a the the parody. Obviously, Mizzou leaving is a huge part. Yeah, Missouri's good. Yeah, Missouri. I mean, they'd want it ever since they've been in the league. They want it, right? <laughs> And you were you were a part of all but one of those MAC championships, right? Uh, yeah, because you guys were EWL one year at, at uh, Edinburgh, weren't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of my assistant years and head coaching. Yeah, yeah your yeah. assistant and head coaching years. You yep, were a all part but one. Of all EWL, but one yeah, year that yeah. Missouri was in the MAC. Yeah, and they, that was the year I was in the EWL. So, yep. Yeah, yeah, that was the year that they you were in the EWL, and it was the last year for the EWL, and then all the EWL teams, the Eastern Wrestling League teams, this is for listeners, got absorbed by the Mid American Conference. Yep, became affiliate members. All the PSAC schools, uh, you guys, Clarion, Lockhaven, Bloomsburg, George Mason, Ryder, Cleveland State. Did I miss any? I think you got them all. Bloom. I got them all. I said yeah. Bloom. I said Bloom. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so they got absorbed into the MAC, and now the MAC is kind of almost like a mega conference. Um, you lost Mizzou, though. Is there any doubt in your mind that you guys can't be a top three team this year, if not bring a MAC championship team title back to Edinburgh, Pennsylvania? No, I have a lot of confidence in this team. So uh, I, I think we have a pretty good group of young guys with a solid uh, group of, uh, you know, veterans. And you know, some of these veterans, if they step up, they can – we definitely have a solid opportunity to be top three and if not win the thing. So it'll be, it'll be exciting to see 
some of these guys come out of their shell and hopefully step up and, you know, it's time. There, you know, there's no more waiting, so it's time to win now. So, Mako's gone, and uh, as is McNally. They're both gone at 174. Yeah. Your guy has to – I mean, Oliver has to be the – if not one of the favorites at 174. It's a wide open weight. Is that a guy who you're really looking to leadership for? Yeah, Jacob's uh, – he's long overdue for being in that, that realm of being a Mac champ. And uh, he has the ability. We just have to coach him the right way, peak him at the right time and make sure he's ready to, ready to go. Uh, I think he's mature enough now. He's kind of figured it out. Hopefully he can, he can be that leader for our team to get us, break us through. I mean, 174 is wide open. 197, I think Balsic left. He went to Rutgers. Mm-hmm. Bunch of guys, uh, somebody's, uh, some guys are dropping out of the weight, going down a weight. I mean, that's another weight, 197, you know. Who do you guys, who are you going to put out at 197, Coach Hill? Uh, we have a guy named Cody Mulligan. So he's, sort of, he's a fourth-year guy now, but he has three years eligibility left. He's a big, strong, tough Pennsylvania boy from Sagertown. Uh, I think he's been uh, – he's he's underperformed, in my opinion. I think he has a lot of great wrestling ahead of him. And this year, honestly – I'm looking for Cody to have a really good year. Looking to you know get him to NCAs and start making some noise. The kid, the kid knows how to win. We just gotta make sure he, he's ready to rock and roll. So I'm excited to see him do well. How many years was he at 84? He just did one year. Well, he did a redshirt year, and then he did a a uh, his first year of eligibility there. So, so he was only a freshman year at 184. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I you know I just I look up and down your lineup. I like the team. I see. Uh, who do you really look for as a breakout performer this year that like maybe we're not talking about, right? You know, Spalding's your heavyweight, right? Yeah. Um, John's our heavyweight. He's uh, an NSA qualifier. Yeah. There's a good chance John is going to red shirt. So okay. we'll, we'll be red shirting him. Uh, he kind of never got one and, you know, came, you know, his true freshman year, he was thrown in the lineup. So he, he was really adamant about red shirt and I think he deserves it, but we got a guy named Max Millen, the kid's, uh, tough. So I'm really excited to see him uh, kind of blossom. And who knows, uh, Max, could, Max could do a lot of damage at the heavyweight um, weight class. So I'm excited to see him kind of roll into the scene. He only lost, he, I mean, he got about, what, 12 matches last year. He lost two to two tough guys. Um, you know, as a freshman, he, they were both really close matches. So uh, it was tough for him to get a lot of quality matches just due to COVID and no opens and stuff like that. But um, obviously, he's going to be young. He's going to have a learning curve, but I'm excited to see him compete at, at heavyweight. Um, the guy, in this guy named Ethan Duca, um, he started for us at 184 last year. Uh, he kind of he kind of peaked really well at the end of the year at the MAC tournament, kind of started believing himself. Uh, he's, he works so hard. He's so focused. Every little thing he does, he focuses on, it's all about wrestling. So, I'm excited to see him grow uh, at that weight class, but he's going to have a tough, tough guy at 184. You know, there's two tough guys there, so we have some good problems up high at 184 with Zach Hansen, which looking to, uh, you know, take that spot as well. So it'll be fun to see those guys um, battle for the spot. Um, and then we got two, we got two, two young guys down low uh, at, at 41, 49. Um, Gabe Willishell at 141, and then. Uh, Ryan Burgess at 149. So I'm excited to see those guys kind of break open. But everybody's got to earn their spot. So there's a lot of, there's a, you know, it's just the way it works too. So you've got to have good competition in your room. So Duca is an Ohio guy. Millen's an Ohio guy. Spalding's an Ohio guy. Spalding is a Ohio guy. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I get fired up when you're talking Ohio guys who are going over there and making them oh, yeah. in Edinburgh. I'm into that. Sign me yeah. up. You know that. We got a kid from Perrysburg, a uh, freshman coming in. We're looking, hopefully, that Alex Gurry, um, Gary kid. He's uh, tough. He's gonna be one fifty seven. He's a freak. So. He's like a gift. Yeah, yeah, he has a lot of ability. So I'm, I'm excited to see him develop. Um, we got Peter Paps fifty seven. So I think uh, Alex will redshirt, but we're excited to see him, you know, come out of his shell too. So Pappas has been at it for a minute, dude. Is this a sixth year? This is fifth year. He's a Long Island guy, yeah. He's a he's an island guy. Anzewich is a Long Island. Strong guy. Island, Strong oh, island. island, right from the Strong Island. I like that. Yeah, Strong. <laughs> yeah, we got a few guys from the Long Island area. So we got. Freshheimer's th- yeah. a Strong Island guy. Big Earn was a Strong Island guy, right? Yeah, Big E's is, is a was a Long Island guy. Um, Crash, 
who else? I, uh, and Gregor lives up in Long Island. Now, yeah. So. Is Greg, are they from – are Torsten and Gregor, they're not from Long Island, though, are they? No, they're from the Rochester area, from okay. uh, Webster. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's where Gregor lives, huh? Yeah, he trains. That's where he trains. He's doing really well in the UFC. So, so he's got that one loss. Yeah, he had that, that one loss against that knockout, the knockout, man. That was, yeah. And that was brutal. Oh, I mean, it was my wife's birthday. I remember I had a bunch of guys over watching. I, I'll never forget that. That was, that was good. It was so, a sombering moment we we had all the guys and, and like peter pappas you know is that's you know he gregor trains like peter and zach so it was really it was a sad moment so and you know gregor was my buddy and college teammate so and but you hey guys, you were training partners you're yeah, 49 yeah, you came, were 57 yeah i mean gregor, how many NCAA tournaments did you guys wrestle at together as teammates two, two so that's your guy that's your guy yeah, gregor is a good yeah he was awesome he's he's a great uh great addition to the team came in hit the ground running so we were who's uh, the biggest freak who's the biggest freak who's the biggest <laughs> freak you coached or wrestled with biggest freak i gotta i'm just saying gregor gillespie uh, I, I i think there's different kinds of freaks um gregor i i, I mean I, I honestly the biggest freak was your nephew um when it came to like just mobility um gregor was a freak technically and just like laser focus on winning wrestling matches. Um, and then uh, Kilgore, I guess was yeah. just a freak. Forgot about it him. It, it, Kilgore was like a freak when it came to like um, just brutal wrestling and just intensity. So there's just different types of freaks. And uh, uh, I am badly on, I mean, coaching him, he was just really t like tough and just mentally tough. So there was, there's different there's different realms of freak ability, but was Kyle Canell the freakiest performance you've ever witnessed? Yeah, the bet one of the best weekends. I mean, I, yeah, dude, so that was, was his that was historical. That yeah. was what he did was so incredible. And what was awesome is I think you made ESPN a couple times, <laughs> and he just kept winning, you know. And then I think uh, was it Mike Mock beat him in the the semis, right? Yeah, M Mock beat him in the semis. Yeah. yeah. But he but, just like his run, and he beat Colin Moore for third and fourth. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, Colin is such a good wrestler, and He's it was so one tough, of those, dude. So tough. Of, yeah, we we were. It was one of those things where we co we coached him like always, you know, shoot that double, come up to the body lock, and it it was like a perfect, it was a perfect storm against Colin, and you know, Colin's amazing wrestler, and it just worked out in Cal's favor where that that body lock, and you know, he kind of. And Cal's super strong there. So it was just – he was in the moment. He was hometown kid from the Cleveland area, right down the road in Astro Yeah, so – Green it was team. A, green team. Yeah, yeah green teams. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, somebody uh, said that they uh, – were something about Michigan State or a green team. And yeah. uh, Flynn was doing a clinic. He's, you don't want to wrestle for a green team, do you? You wrestle <laughs> for a green team? You can't wrestle for a green team. I, was, hey, that, I had never that, heard that, it, but – yeah, that's where I got it from. So uh, they blame it on Flynn. I so. love it. Green team. Yeah. Wait, wasn't one of the Edinburgh guys was a coach there at uh, uh, Ashtabula Lakeside? Was it Welsh? He might have. He might have had a stint there. Yeah, I think I he think did. Welsh play a was bit. there yeah. for a hot minute. Yeah, Welsh was there. So green team. <laughs> yeah, green team. Hey, uh, Josh, Josh Moore, green team. <laughs> hey, green don't team. <laughs> Cleveland State. <laughs> That's kind of like un, that's kind of like a below. It's kind of like a uh, unsaid, uh, you know, in, you know, insult within the, you know. I'm an O'Carver guy. I came from a green team. I, I can't do anything about it. It was just where yeah. I was. I don't know what to tell you. Green teams. I'm a green team guy. What do you want from me? <laughs> Such a weird dude. When he did it, he was at the Barbarian. He was at Sassy's place. Oh, was it? Oh, so this is yeah. recent. And he said, and he was like, "You don't want to wrestle for a green team." Can't wrestle for a green team, and he did it. It was just like out of nowhere. I didn't prompt him or anything. It was so good. Uh, I, I never got you know because you would always say it to me. Ah, you can't lose to a guy from a green team. <laughs> but hey, you saw you were a part of some crazy performances though. You know, you're sitting in yeah. the chair for all both all the canal matches. Yeah, you were in the chair for Kilgore pinning Clayton Foster in the NCAA finals. You and Musser were in the corner when Ian. Uh, beat Caldwell twice in the University National Finals. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Freestyle, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the more freaky performances. But that 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 to me um was weird because uh he didn't make weight. He was supposed to go seventy. Seventy oh, kilos. Yeah, and then he was yeah. like, Yeah, I'm just gonna go up. And I was like, he had Bo Jordan in the semifinals, and I'm like, I hope Bo, Bo Jordan rips his hat off. You were, you were ready for – Oh, Bo, I wanted, like, Bo Jordan to commit so many off. felonies because Bo Jordan's massive, dude. Yeah, he's a big – Ian kid. and Bo Jordan are not the same body frame. It's not <laughs> – you, you get what I'm saying, right? Like, Bo Jordan's huge. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I saw a person. Yeah, he's a I big was kid. Like, yeah. He's going to rip his hat off. He's going to hurt him. He's going to put him underneath him. He's going to break his ribs. And th- then he's going to – I think it didn't matter with Ian that much. No, a lot of times no, it didn't. Size. It didn't because he's he's so um his footwork's incredible and he's so explosive, right? I remember. I think it was that weekend. We was that the same? Was that the same like stint when Kilger was Olympic red shirting? Yeah, yes. I think it was. Yes. And Kilger came back like a few days before the universities because he wrestled in as well. No, they won together. That was the year. Ian was the year after. It was 2014 because he was an All American that year at 57. Whatever. Well, yeah, it, like yeah. going back to the size doesn't matter. With Ian was like him and Kilgore were like talking crap in the room, and and uh, somehow when I first won the five takedowns, and, and Ian took Kilgore down like five times, like within like a few minutes, it was like less than two minutes. So we were, I was just like, it was like a real like somber moment. Like, and then, you know, Ian doesn't say a word. He just like like walks away. So <laughs> I. But I mean, Kilgore is like two hundred. Chikora was 215 pounds, and Ian, you know, might weigh 165, 160. Maybe. So. Dude, he's little yeah. still. Ian's still in pretty good shape. Oh, yeah. Russell's like an old guy now, though. I don't think there's a lot of flying bandinis, boot scoots, and, you know, inside trips. I think it's just like snap down, run around, grab a single leg, dump him. You know what I mean? He's still – he's not that old yet, so. Well, I know that, but he has to wrestle smart is my point. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, so when you that. look at – you, you know, you've coached them. Like, we just named off a litany of freaks. Literally. Like, freaky guys. You, you know, and then Gregor, you wrestled with Gregor. Right? You wrestled with Clemson. You wrestled with Gregor. Gregor was unreal, man. You wrestled with Deontay. Deontay Penn was a freak. Yeah, Deontay was fun. Like, he was fun to watch. Like, he would – um, he uh, – <laughs> he was just fun to, like – his mentality was fun. So like some of the, uh, just the way he presented himself and his, you know, his attitude. And I remember one time we were in, we were in line for uh, the Michigan state open and uh, is you know, the 165 pounders were next to the 57 pounders were all in line. And me and Deontay are standing there underwear waiting to weigh in. He's just like looking around. He goes, who am I going to pin today? Like in front of everybody, like he didn't care. So it was just like, you know, and he pinned a lot of guys. So, and, but he would, he would, he would give up back points on purpose to try to pin you. So like he would, he would give up like a goofy tilt and all of a sudden reverse it and pin you. So it was always something like that with the on day. And his biggest, one of his, you know, his confidence, he, that, that guy, that guy had so much confidence. So, he, and he was entertaining. Who so, am I going to pin today? Oh yeah. yeah. And you had, so you were sandwiched in between him and Gregor. Um, yeah, it was, it was a Gregor, then 57 was me. And then, and then Yetzer was on the team too with you, right? Yetzer was a little older than me, but yeah, Yetzer, um, in that time frame, I guess I was, I was still at 49, I think when Yetzer was at 50, you know, cause yet Yetzer was at uh, 74 and 65 too. So it was all through that transition. Yetzer was three years older than me or two. I think I forget. Man, you wrestle with some really good guys, man. And, and good guys too. Like nice guys. Good guys. Uh, where's Bunch? Bunch is Bunch. Um, currently, age wise, compared to you, uh, he's one year older than me. He's one class above me, so he's out in uh, California, he's still fighting, and um, just had a just had a kid, I think, this past summer. So he's uh, he's doing well. I keep in touch with Bunch, every, you know, here and there. Yeah, I mean, you got such a great alumni base. You know, what's Koscheck do? I know Koscheck is older than you, way older than you. Uh, yeah, he, he, uh, when I came to Edinburgh, he graduated. So he's full five years, six years older than me. So, so to get a guy like that though. So let's just say Koscheck, you want a guy like Koscheck as alum, you want him around, you want to see, you know, this is what Edinburgh wrestling is about. He's one of your NCAA champions. 
yeah. then, you know, there's obviously the older alum. Obviously, you got uh, Lou Roselli, the head coach at Oklahoma. You got Roby at Virginia Tech. I mean, you got your, your coaching tree is incredible. Obviously, I said Clemson and Reddy at Maryland. Uh, Yetzer is at Roanoke, which is a new program, uh, D3. He's building that right now. So, yeah. I mean, you know, your coaching team's pretty – yeah, Jim, Jim Gibson was in my class. He's the head coach of VMI. Gibson's at VMI, and then you got Shop is at and Purdue. Port, yeah. And then Port is at WVU. You know, you, got, you guys got just excellent alumni there, right? So, when yeah, you, what, yeah. what do you try and keep up with all these guys, and do you try and, you know, email or text message Josh Koscheck, hey, can you come to the golf outing? Do you try and stay in touch with these guys to support the program? Yeah, we do. It's a big part of our – I mean, it's a big part of how we operate and how we keep our program afloat with some things. And fundraising is a big part of the job here and keeping uh, keeping the alumni engaged and keeping them excited, excited about our team. And uh, it, it's, I have big shoes to fill. Uh, you know, Flynn did an amazing job all around all, from every aspect of the program. So uh, trying to emulate that and trying to keep up with what he did and try to, um, you know, you got Bruce Baumgartner. It lives, you know, a mile up the road from where I work. So it's just a lot of um, great, great support here. And um, But yeah, we just had a reunion um, September 10th before a golf outing. And we had about 80 to 90 people there, you know, maybe half of them were alumni or somehow wrestled or were part of the program so it was uh it was a cool it was more of the dna era so and that era is really cool you get you get into some pretty cool uh stories and um you know when it when they when they started becoming division one I, I think the second or third year they took seventh in the country the ninth john o'day won the ncas yeah so it was just crazy how good they were i mean that's like i know they did the uh you know the program you know with um you know, the flow did way back. And I, I did all the interviews with the, uh, your old athletic director who just passed away. McDonald. Yeah. So I just, I guess what I'm trying to say is like the, what they did in that short amount of time, him and Bruce, Deanna and Bruce and Ash, Gary Astorino, it was kind of incredible, like how fast they got that good that quick. So it was pretty cool. And a lot of all those guys were back at the reunion. So I got to really connect with those guys and get to know them. So it was fun. Do you ever feel the pressure, the expectations of, you know, you you, I just named off a dozen guys, right? We just named off a dozen guys who are all time, like some of the best guys to wrestle in college wrestling. Bruce Baumgartner was your, one of your athletic directors, uh, an assistant coach at one point in time, a head coach at one point in time. I mean, you've had some amazing people in touch with your program. They know of your program. You've had, you've brought trophies back to Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, and not 50 years ago, you know, six years ago, right? Yeah. Do you feel the pressure sometimes to like, hey man, we got to get back there. We got to get back there. Does it drive you? Do they feel the pressure? Do you like it? Um, I like it. I, you know, obviously it's um, big shoes to fill, and you just gotta you gotta hold the standard, and you gotta work really hard to you know get back to where where the school was and what we were doing. Obviously things change, and you can make up any excuse in the world, but ultimately people want to see you win. They want to see you do it the right way, and they want to um, you know look at Edinburgh as a, as a, as a beacon to, you know, of what they did and their experiences and try to, you know, relive that a little bit. So um, I do, you do feel the pressure, but you also just know this is part of the process and I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar with the school and familiar with the culture and hopefully we can get back to where we were. Can you still go get a guy from Leavenworth, Kansas? Can you still get a, go get a guy from Moberly, Missouri? Can you? I mean, we already know you guys can get guys from New York. We know that. We know PA. We know Ohio, right? Like those are no-brainers. We get it. Jersey, you do well. You know, it touches your state. Can you still go get those like crazy outliers? Like you got b- bunches from Leavenworth, Kansas, dude. Yeah, <laughs> bunch, bunch from Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, 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 Clem's from uh, Clemson's from uh, Moberly, Missouri, right outside of Mizzou, right? Yeah, uh, we we try, and it's one of those things where the you know, we got, we get, we have kids from all over the, all over the country. We have three kids from California, three kids from Florida. We got, we got two kids from Missouri. Um, we, we're trying to get the best ones too. So, uh, recruiting is a huge part of what we do. So, um, we can, we just gotta, we gotta get in the living rooms. We gotta, you know, have the time and resources to get out there. And, um, we're looking to do those type of things. 
I remember the Lugo brothers came up and were and they both wrestled on the team. They were both starters and they were from Miami. They're from like Dade County. I was like, did you guys visit here? Did you, <laughs> when did you visit here? I'm like, because you guys get a ton of snow and it's just like, because I do, I used to do the open all the time right? and did all the duels. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you'd have these Florida guys and you'd have this guy from Georgia. You had like all Americans from Florida and Georgia. And I'm like, Sean Russell. I'm like, when did you visit here? How do you do that? How did he, how did he do that? How are you doing that? Yeah. I think it's just, uh, you, you sell the history and you sell the culture and you sell the, the big time wrestling, um, small school, small school, big time wrestling, um, part of it. And you just, uh, get that small school feel and hopefully they, they fall in love with it and want to be a part of what you're doing. So, you know, um, recently you guys, what recently happened with Clarion, Edinburgh, Lock Haven? What did the state schools recently do financially? What, what is that situation? I got to ask you about it. What actually happened? You're not closing your school down. All this crazy stuff people are talking about. Edinburgh is still going to be Edinburgh. You're always going to be the fighting Scotch. You're going to go in Macomb gym, get an undergraduate degree. What is the new financial thing that they did with the, the, the state schools in Pennsylvania? So they, uh, there's six schools integrating um, in the two, two different um, institutions. So the one integration that Edinburgh is involved with is with Clarion and Cal U. And we are essentially going to be uh, one university um, under three separate um, entities, I guess. So one accreditation, but three, three separate athletic departments, three separate, um, you know, schools that have their own identity. Um, nothing's changing with the athletic departments. Uh, I think a lot of it is more under the administrative side, uh, resource wise, uh, through the, you know, HR, you know, president, you know, not having three presidents, but one president, uh, one provost and stuff like that. Uh, and just trying to, uh, consolidate and, keep costs down for students essentially that's one of the big things so keep costs down um create a uh a, a bigger network uh of educational opportunities essentially you might be able to take some classes as a student athlete at edinburgh at clarion or cal u um, there's still some some kinks they have to work out with the vnca with the eligibility stuff and what you can do at one school versus another so how many parents did you have to like walk off the ledge? Like when this news came out, they all, everybody oh, assumed the worst, right? It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't that bad. It was just a lot of like, you know, simple phone calls or questions, but the school did a really good job of keeping that, um, that communication and just lines of, uh, you know, interpretation that well, this is exactly what's happening and stuff like that. So uh, there obviously there are media outlets and you know people on social media that might be like, oh, they're closing the schools, but that's not the closed case at all. And um, they were saying stuff like that before I even got the head coaching job here. So it's just a lot of people just saying whatever that brings up uh, you know likes or retweets or whatever. So no, people don't do that. What are you talking about, Coach Hill? You know, bad news. People do bad things for the purest bad. of reasons. I don't know what. There's no clickbait. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Do people use it against you negatively? We know there's tons of negative recruiting out there. People use that against you negatively. I'm sure they do. I, I really haven't. Um, I really haven't had other recruits say it to me really particularly um, against the decision why they they would come here would would not. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's been a huge factor, but I obviously could see it being something where a student athlete might not want to even bring it up and say, Hey coach, I'm deciding to go in here because of this and that. So it really never comes up in the conversations. Who are your assistant coaches right now? Uh, we got Big E, Ernest James. Um, he wrestled here at Edinburgh. So, uh, Long he, Island. Uh, Sorry. Long Island. Uh, the guy's a workhorse, real simple down to earth guy. Love that. Love, um, having him, you know, is my head assistant. Um, he's, always you know he lives in the wrestling room and he's he's a great he's a great addition to my staff um he's going on his second year as a full-time coach um and we got two other guys uh that are our assistant coach um sam Recco was a coach over at lincoln college in i think illinois so he's kind of you know uh 
great addition on the social media side and just communication and just just being um you know he's dab he's starting to get into recruiting now and um re real positive uh real positive polite kid that's gonna put it you know put everything he can to make his student athlete um better at wrestling um and then we got a we got another local guy who just wrestled he wrestled for us his name is uh tyler fath um, he just finished up his master's degree. He's, um, he's one of, he's our Fath could have had this year though. Couldn't he have? He could have this year. And he also like, if he really wanted to, he could have almost an eighth year. Cause he, oh my goodness. He, if he really wanted to apply for it, but we, he was ready to move into his next chapter of life. And, um, the big thing for him was he, he already got a master's degree here and now he was, um, he, he didn't want to just take any classes. He just, he wanted to either work on his doctorate or, um, or you know just start to get in the real world he's a he owns a tree company he's a volunteer assistant and he's he's just a, one of the one of the most uh, interesting um great humans you would ever you know he's a good dude so. is fast sager town too yeah he's sager town okay so sager town you guys had a duel with wisconsin yeah Freaking awesome duel by the way super competitive tons of fun yeah. That was awesome, man. I really enjoyed covering that duel. I think that was one of the last things I ever covered for Flow Wrestling. Oh, that duel. Really? Yeah. yeah. That and Iron Man. Yeah, Jim Mulligan, uh, Cody's dad, put that on for us um, over there at uh, Sager Time. So it was, a, it was a fun event. So, Okay, Coach. We never ran down 25, 33, 41, 49. You did do some of them. You know, we talked. Yeah, I kind of spurred it around. I, I'll run, I'll, how about I run up the lineup? Run um, up the lineup real quick and just tell me what, like what the Scots starters? got coming up. What, you want potential starters? or? Yeah, just, go uh, go 25 up. Do, do the weight you already did, too. 125 on up. Who do the fighting Scots? Who's Edinburgh going to be putting out on the mat? Give me potential, guys. You don't you have to give me one. Give me, hey, we might have this guy, this guy, and this guy, and who's going to battle for this pot. But go ahead. Give me 125 for Edinburgh this year. So, you know, we got a returning, um, you know, Lucas Rodriguez. He's been here since I became head coach. Florida guy. Yeah, Florida guy. The guy is so passionate. He's worked so hard. Um, you know, if you look at it in perspective, the, the, he's improved m more than probably anybody that I've coached over the last several years. The kid is a workhorse, more passionate than you, any guy I really know in the sport currently. He lives, eats, sleeps, eats, sleeps and breathes wrestling. Um, but yeah, he'll, he'll be, uh, probably our strong favorite at 125 currently. Um, we got a lot of young, um, newcomer guys at 125. Uh, we got these soda twin brothers from the, from Massachusetts area, multiple time state champs, uh, new England champs. So we're excited to see those guys develop. They probably need another year or so, but so they'll be looking the red shirt. Um, 33 is a real wide open weight class. Um, uh, we had, um, we, Look, looking like one of these young guys might step step into the lineup. We got a kid named uh, Eamon Ole from uh, over there by Port Matilda by State College. Uh, we got a kid from California, um, Clay Clayton Basher. Kid works super hard, super focused. So we're looking probably a new face at 133. Uh, we do have a kid that wrestled 125 last year for us named uh, Logan Jaquay, and he's gotten a little bit bigger, so he could be a, 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 a fighting for that spot and be you know starter at 33 so we so we don't know it's a super wide open weight class for our team right now so we'll, we'll see how those cards unfold in the next several weeks um, 41 I would say our, our favorite to be a starter would be uh Gabe Willishell um and he's you know he I think he might have been ranked in the top 20 um after last year's Mac tournament he beat some ranked guys he's he's a gamer probably one of the more dangerous guys out there so it's be fun to see him compete and um, kind of really get a full schedule under him, see how he does. Uh, 49, uh, Ryan Burgos, a Hilton, New York guy, um, lived a couple of doors down from Yanni. So he wrestles sort of similar to Yanni. Um, hopefully we can get him up to that level. But the kid's a, the kid's a scrapper. He's got a great future ahead of him. Um, we got a, another guy that's going to be looking to fight for us. Kid spot, a local kid from Sharon, Solly Allen, will be in the mix. Um, and there's a few others. Uh, 57, uh, Peter Pappas is probably our favorite to be our starter at 57. Um, strong Island. Yeah. Strong Island. Um, going up, keep going up. We've got 165. Like I said, it's a wide open weight class. We'll see where it goes. Um, from there, I got a nice tough freshman class. Uh, a few of them are looking to be 65 pounders, a Dylan Cone kid from Florida. 
Um, returning fifth year guy, uh, PJ, he's been a backup at 57, but he's gotten a little bigger, so he might be a possible starter there. So Russell Ops are going to be fun. We have a lot of um, things to work out and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get a lot of matches in October 29th coming up. Um, 74 Oliver is probably obviously our favorite. Um, got a few, few tough kids, local kid named, you know, Joey Arnold that's works his butt off. So he'll be looking to back him up there. Um, 84, we've got two really tough guys, uh, Ethan Duca and Zach Anzalich. So we're, we're excited to see those guys, um, you know, really shine and see who um, gets to the top of that weight class. Duca works super hard. The kid's super focused, uh, had a really good run at the MAC tournament last year, beat a lot of guys he lost to um, earlier in the, in the short season, but he beat them at the MAC tournament. Um, 97, uh, Cody Mulligan, I would say he's going to be our favorite. Uh, we got this kid from California just transferred in. His name's Jack Kleiner. He's works really, really hard. The kid runs a five minute mile. So where's we'll he, where's he from? What what he transferred in from? One of their uh, Fresno City College. Fresno City so College. Do you do you know how they do that then? Right? You know how it's uh, how they do a ju. They're they're not in the JUCOs with like the Clackamas and Iowa Central. Yeah. They have their own state championships in California. Yeah, they have, yeah, yeah. But they still wrestle at the NCAA the, the JUCO ch championships, right? I think that they just do state championships, and that's it. I think it's a funding thing. Because I watched that, uh, they had a Netflix, like Last Chance You, and they did uh, East LA College. And I think, no, they just have a state championship because it's that way in football. They did a, a San Francisco, like an Oakland team. They did two JUCOs in California, and they only play in their state championship. They don't do a junior. It's no, California, yeah. ask him. A actually, ask him. I know I'm right on that because they, ju they just do. The JUCO. They just do California JUCO. They, he doesn't go to I – didn't, I didn't really – I didn't look at any of that. Essentially, yeah, COVID was kind of like a cover-up for that. So, we just – I saw him wrestle at the uh, World Team Trials. Um, I think – I guess it was over a year from that, you know, ago. So, we got to watch him there. And then um, – But that's a cool thing to know, right? Like that – because yeah, that helps cool. you in the future when you're recruiting these guys yeah, from Fresno course. City College or – Sacramento yeah. City, whatever, East LA, you know, right? If they got, they don't have wrestling, I don't think, but you get my point. I get your point. Yeah, 100%. So, but ask him about that. What's his name again? Jack Kleiner. Jack Kleiner. I got to look, yeah. I'm going to, I got to keep my eye out on him now. All right, keep going. Yeah. And then we have a kid that came, and then the 97 pounder that's, um, he's, he's a wild card for us to really come in. He's a, he's kind of a tweener. He's a big one, 97 pounder. He won a, he won a, a New Jersey state championship last year as a, you know, he's coming as a freshman, um, Nick Lodato. So it'll be fun to see him kind of blossom and grow into the weight class and um, possibly could see him a heavyweight down the road. Cause he's a big kid. He's about six, three, six, four. So what did um, he win? 220 or 195? The state. Um, 195. He won 195. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, Max Millen will be looking to be a, probably our, our starter up at heavyweight um, coming this coming uh, season with John Spalding, most likely redshirting. So I love it. I love it, Matt Hill. I love when we can come on here and get completely off track, run off the rails, and bring it back to a team preview. Oh, yeah. You, do you, you still want to talk about the Yellowstone cal caldera? We listen. How many years did I just randomly just like hit you with Yellowstone Caldera? I would just text it to you. <laughs> I mean, it could explode any time. We can, we it's can a all... super mega volcano. It's the whole width of the park. It's all of northwest. Uh, it's not all of northwest, but it's a large part of northwest Wyoming. And it's yeah. on the Idaho Montana border. Yeah, if it blows up, we're all screwed. It's, it's it. It's nuclear winter. It's a done deal. The human race is over in seven years. Cockroaches. But all the people, like, all the we, – we already know there's, like, an elite class of people. They've done a bunch of movies about it, or they've done, like, Deep Impact. They've done uh, 2012, the, remember the Mayan calendar one. And oh, they, yeah, that remember one. Remember they yeah. did all – and they had, there's, like, an elite Kilgore, class. Kilgore, they, Kilgore would be all yeah, over this. Yeah. yeah. But they make, like, bunkers, or they have arcs where all the – Kanye yeah. West gets to go and Mike oh, Novogratz and whoever those guys all get to go and you and I got to ride it out, you know, hugging our kids on the couch when the the gigantic wave hits us or the meteor hits us or whatever, right? I got I'm digging my hole right now, big guy waiting for that caldera. 
I got a, the bunker, huh? I got a bunker built. On Yellowstone the- Caldera <laughs> is a mega volcano. If it erupts, it will black out the sun for like seven years at least. Oh, I got, I got Macomb Fieldhouse. We got stuff. We got it. You, you got know, the marshmallow. Down. You got the marshmallow. It's a greenhouse. It's so. right. Hey, are you guys bringing the Edinburgh uh, Open back? Yeah, it will be back. Yeah, uh, February uh, 6th. Nice. I'm going to come over for that and just uh, yeah, let, some, my, let some snow fall on my truck and destroy it or something. Yeah, you got a truck now? You got a like F-150, baby. Oh, you got Oh, man. You I have sold a... the uh, – remember the little Subaru car? Yeah, did you get rid of that? Sold that to Joe C. Joe C. He texted me the other day, said he was in town. He grew up on Kidder Hill. Yes, my and dad live at the end of Kinder Hall, right at the top of the hill by uh, 19. Yeah, yeah. We Isn't that uh, crazy how small of a world hill. We run that hill all the time. So, yeah, he, he said he was in town. and We just didn't match up right. I would have loved to see him. So, hey, are, the, are, the, are Knox and Lincoln wrestling at all? Yeah. Uh, they Well, they, they started, and then COVID hit, and then it was kind of a mess getting them into wrestling. And with me getting tested three times a day, I mean, week and what, what, was it three times a day. What? Three times a week getting tested last year. And just that whole process. They didn't get to wrestle much last year. Uh, we have, we have some wrestling, we have some wrestling masks back there where they are somewhere. Oh, okay. Is there an airdyne back there too? Uh, there's a spinner bike and a treadmill. And- nice. Matt Hill's a fit guy I like that. And then his kids can beat each other up on the mat yeah right. yeah they are wrestling they, they wrestle um they did camps and they're doing some clinics coming up and how stuff. old are they uh seven and four knox will oh, be man five. there's gonna be some miller boy wars they're gonna run into this hill boys i already oh, know yeah. it. Don't, they're don't gonna be. get all i'm gonna do is be like jump up and grab their big heads <laughs> got big heads you gotta try and put the big problem is getting a hold of their head Dude, your head's your head's you know my head? No! This is a seven and a half. That's a seven and seven eighths on your head. It's a large. It's a large. That thing is so stretched. Whatever. It's so stretched out. That head's screaming right now. That fighting Scott wants to run off that hat right now. <laughs> Matt Hill. Oh. I gotta right. get you. Uh, I gotta get over there for a duel or something and check something out. You still got Flow Wrestling coming in? Um. Currently, we do. Yeah, we have to sort out a few things, but not 100% sure yet. So, I'm um, trying to get that actually solved right now. So, Cool. I might still have to come over and check a duel out or just see yeah, what you guys on got over. going on. Who are We're your like, home duels? Oh, we have a huge home schedule. So, let me see. Uh, we got Pitt at the, the 13th. Um, November 13th? Yeah, November 13th. And then Saturday. And then right after that, we uh, the next one we have like a tri duel with uh, Buffalo and Gannon, December third, and then Kent State's coming in December twenty first, I believe. And then we run, um, then we run our max schedule uh, with uh, well Central's coming in. They're they're not our uh, core. Well, they are Mac, but we have Central coming in before the Edinburgh Open. We have Ryder coming in, you know, in early January or mid January. We have. And then we have uh, Oklahoma. We don't travel Tech, all. Is either one of them coming? What's that? Oklahoma or Virginia Tech or W? No, not this year. No, no. So we got to get down there or go over, go over to Oklahoma. Maybe next the following year. Or so trying to get down there that way. So. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna try and get to one of them at least. Yeah, get on over. Come over. You can sleep in my sleep in my basement, and I'll drive home with my kids. Bring them with you. If I can bring my kids and then maybe have yeah, the help boys just kick the tar out of them. Yeah, bring them in. Well, because I got I got a I got a basement. You can just put the kids down here and they can battle it out. So we'll Lincoln is Lincoln seven. Yeah, he'll be. Yeah, he's seven. Second so. grade or first? Second grade. He's really young for his grade. So okay, he's Ferdinand's seven. a kindergartner. He's five. Yeah, first and Thomas grade. is three. Thomas is the Thomas is the bottom of the barrel there between the the the. Hill boys and the Miller boys. What do you mean? No, he's the, the youngest is the point. Oh, yeah. Bottom of the totem pole. He's the, okay. He's the bottom of the bottom barrel. of the barrel. He's going to get beat up. <laughs> Fish in a barrel. Fish in a barrel. Fish in a barrel. All right, Matt Hill. We're going to get off here. You got anything else for me? Um, No, man. Just thanks for having me. Uh, is there a was... team store this year where I can buy some gear? Yeah, we just ended it. So, uh, Come on, yeah. man! You got the Dude, team scores. Got the store's got to go through freaking October. They, they we have that BSN thing, BSN, and they they do like a two week two two week stint. 
so they know they have all the all the product and then they they shut it down because they don't want to they don't want to run out of product they gotta dislike make sure they have it. dislike i hit the dislike button just now on you well guess what someone that's on social media so much you we posted that crap so much so you should have saw we had team store going wouldn't it be First, funny if we went on there and saw that i retweeted it <laughs> that'd be on me that'd be on me all right hey you, you probably liked it i probably did i'd probably retweet yeah, it my wife my wife loves the the defense soap stuff so so i gotta get you guys hooked up if i come over i'll bring some this is peppermint defense soap.com go check that out We've got the uh, Barbarian Hour sponsored by Partners, Barbarian Apparel, Josh Sasfi in Cincinnati, www. We got barbarian singlets are awesome. So we got you guys him got them. Yeah, we got them for the uh, for our club team this past. What did summer. he? Uh, what did he do? Did did he uh, give you like a plaid design? What design did he give you? Mm, I can't remember. You guys had a cool a couple of cool plaid ones. I liked. Yeah, they were just blue and red ones. So they were like. Okay. Yeah, they, they just had, like, ERTC on the front. So you have they're... done some. You've done some stuff with Barbarian Apparel, though. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. J- Josh is awesome, so. Check it out at bar- www.barbarianapparel.com. Matt Hill, Edinburgh Fighting Scots, thanks for coming on tonight. Stick around here, Coach Hill. All right.